In this module, we'll be looking at data transformation and specifically, we'll be looking at an R package called dplyr, D-P-L-Y-R, to do this. For this module, I have borrowed extensively from this particular website. This is run by Hadley Wickham. Uh, so you can also go ahead and take a look at this if you need some clarifications. You will recall that we had earlier seen this diagram. It's talking about the entire data science process. And uh, we'll be looking in this module, we'll be looking at how to use dplyr to perform data transformations. Before we jump into dplyr, just a couple of points. First of all, uh, you know that there's the assignment operator in R and that we have two variations. One is the uh, less than sign followed by the hyphen, which is the assignment operator that we'll be using extensively. Uh, so this is what we expect uh, that people would use. You can also use the equal sign, but the meaning is subtly different. And at this stage, because you're getting into intermediate R programming, I suggest that you stick with this assignment operator. Now within R Studio, there's a nice shortcut to, to generate this. And that I'll just jump into R Studio and show that, right? So if you hold the Alt key down and press, so suppose I want to say X is uh, assigned the value five, I can just type X and then hold the Alt key down and press the hyphen. So automatically R Studio inserts the assignment operator less than hyphen and it also surrounds it with spaces. Right? So that types uh, saves a lot of typing for us. So I can do this. So for example, what I did was I said, let's say uh, Y, I didn't type any space or anything, Alt dash and then 45 or 40. Okay. So that's a shortcut to type the assignment operator. Uh, so you could also go ahead and use this. Uh, now, of course, in R Studio, as you're working within R, you're going to create a lot of variables and name them. There's several options for how you name your variables. So for example, this is uh, uh, you know, what Hadley Wickham recommends, and I also prefer this, and this is what they call as snake case. In other words, uh, you don't want to write your entire variable name as just one big word because many times variable names are, uh, you know, are, uh, they contain multiple words within them and you need a good way to separate out the words. Okay. Of course, spaces are not allowed inside variable names, so you can't use spaces to, to separate out the words. Uh, one popular option is to use underscores to separate the words. Okay. So for example, uh, I underscore use underscore snake underscore case. Okay, so that's a nice option. It's a popular option used not just in R, but in many other programming languages. So you could use that. Another option is what people call in the programming community, they call as camel case, which is to start with a lowercase, but for every new word started with an uppercase letter, right? So for example, use is a sec sec the second word. So you, it starts with an uppercase and so on and so on. This is another option. Uh, it's a little difficult to read actually, but it's very common in many programming languages. So this is a good option as well. Another option which is quite popular within R is to use the period character to separate out multiple words. Okay, this is also pretty readable. Uh, and I actually like this over using underscores because underscores just a little heavy on the eye, uh, but uh, you know, it, it's your preference. Uh, so this is also something I, I like to use quite a bit, especially because in R, the period doesn't have any special meaning as in as it does in other programming languages. Okay, so that's an option. Uh, but what you should definitely avoid is renouncing convention altogether or simply mixing it all up. Okay, that's not a great idea. So whichever option you choose among these three, just be consistent so that it's just uh, helpful to you and helpful to others. So just be consistent between the first three options. Definitely avoid the fourth. Okay, some tips on RStudio. Uh, in RStudio, of course, we all we already know that there is a command history. For example, if you go here, if you go to the history tab, you can see the command history of whatever commands you have used recently. Another nice way to get recent commands is to use the command up arrow or control up arrow right inside the, uh, the, the console. So you're in the console, you're trying to type a command you can press control up arrow or on a Mac command up arrow and it shows all the commands, the recent commands that have been issued. You can just select a command from there and execute it. That's one option. Or you could also type a part of a function name, 
So for example, suppose I say uh, HIS, okay, so automatically the functions which map this, they automatically come up and you can select one of them, okay, so it provides some kind of help within R Studio. You get some kind of help within R Studio for typing in commands. Uh, so that's uh, useful. The con uh, control up arrow or command up arrow also is useful. Uh, if you like, I already showed you. If you already type in some uh, starting characters uh, and press the tab key, you can also get filtered command history of the commands that match the characters that you have already typed. Okay, so that is the, uh, this part of it. Uh, you you already know that the dollar automatically pops up. Uh, you know a list of uh, you know data frame attributes right so for example suppose i have a data frame called flights for example so if i just type uh, for example flights and then press dollar so automatically all the attributes or columns within the data frame show up and you can go ahead and select one of them okay now some of these things also work in your script window so for example suppose i did it it also works here Okay, the command history will not work inside a file. Uh, and uh, if you recall, I had also recommended that the best way to do R coding is not inside the, uh, the, the console, but instead to open an empty file. So for example, uh, you, you know, you're here, you just say file, and then say new file and say R script. And within R script, type the commands and execute them. So for example, suppose I want to type the command uh, X is 5 so I'll do X and then alt dash and then say 5 uh, that's one command I've entered either I could enter a command and then run it enter another command and run it or enter a series of commands so for example I say Y uh, 300 and so on and so on enter many commands and then I can execute the commands as you already know position yourself on a particular line and then just hit the run key the run key runs one command okay so the run key would run one command you could do that right uh, this key actually would run the uh, you know previous command again whatever you you had run earlier suppose i did that it's going to run the previous command again uh, this is going to run the, the the run is going to run the command on which the cursor currently is you can also select a piece of code and then run it source is going to run all the commands in the current uh, code area okay source is for running all the commands in the current code area so you've got all these little bit of a uh, little bit of options within R studio okay um, of course you already know that when you're typing a command in R studio right so for example uh, if you're in the uh, console and I type a command so for example suppose I say hist for histogram right and uh, and then you know I have started the command. Uh, this is not a great example. Suppose I do you know uh, x equals 100 plus something, right? But I haven't finished the command because if I had said 100 plus 200 or something, the command would be completed, would execute it. But right now this is incomplete because I have not said what comes after the plus. So on the next line, uh, it prompts me with a plus sign to say. Uh, complete your command. Of course, this plus is, has nothing to do with this plus that I typed, uh, but it just says, okay, go ahead, complete the rest of your command. So I say 200. Now the command is complete and it executes the command. Okay. Uh, so the plus sign, when you see that here, uh, indicates that your command is incomplete and that you can go ahead and complete it. Uh, uh, many times this will happen because you start, uh, you intentionally continue the command on multiple lines. That's fine. Or alternately, uh, you start a double quote, you haven't finished the double quote, so R knows that the double quote of a string is not finished, so it's going to ask you to continue. Now, sometimes what will happen is you'll enter a command and it's not complete and you know that you made some mistake. You don't want to complete it. So, for example, suppose I say x is 200 divided by something, something, you know, I by uh, 300 plus whatever. You know, I've written something. I press enter. The command is incomplete. It's saying plus but I just want to get out of this and start afresh rather than completing the existing command because you might have just gone completely haywire with this. So just press the escape key and it comes out of that uh, that mode. Okay. 
Now within R Studio, of course, like I said, you're not going to be typing in commands here. Instead, you're going to be typing in commands uh, in your source uh, window, the so script window, and then executing them. Uh, same thing applies there, except that uh, suppose I do something like uh, X and then Alt minus then 200 plus I have an incomplete command and then I complete it on the next line. Notice that if you do this, it automatically indents you correctly, right? So that uh, it's easier to read. It doesn't start from the beginning. It pushes it in a little bit. Suppose I do this 300. So now if I try to execute this command run, it will execute both the lines together. Okay, so it completes the that execution. That is simply happening because of an option that I've selected here. Uh, so I do R Studio preferences, or you could do Tools Global Options. Same thing. Uh, so in Tools Global Options, one of the things is uh, uh, is one of the options to execute a complete command, execute all lines in a statement. Okay, if you check this, then uh, it'll execute uh, all the lines till the command is complete, right? So it's not going to, for example, when I'm here, uh, when I do 200 plus and I press and enter, it's not going to wait with the plus for, my, for me to execute the next line. It's going to uh, read all as, as much as is required to finish the current command and then execute it. That's happening because of this particular option. I think this is the option in the latest version of RStudio, but it also could be a difference between your Windows and uh, Mac versions. So if you're using a Windows version and this uh, option is not the default, uh, I would say go into, uh, you know, Tools, Global Options and select this particular option. Okay, so that's just another small little uh, trick within uh, R Studio. Okay, now another important point is whenever you assign something in R Studio, right, so I'm just going to delete these lines, right, so here I'm saying X is 5. Right, I assign this, meaning I execute this line of code. You see that nothing, there's no output indicated for you uh, to indicate what you actually did. Okay, uh, so when you assign a value to a variable, R remains silent. Right, it just does the job and comes back to the command prompt. Whereas if I type now uh, X, which is just a variable name, I didn't assign anything to anything, then it prints the result here. Right, so for example, suppose I say 20. It prints out 20 because I didn't assign the value 20 to any variable, right? On the other hand, suppose I said uh, y is 20, then it will not say anything, right? Because I have assigned the value to a variable, so it just goes silent. Now, sometimes you may want to assign a value to a variable and also just for confirmation, you may want it to print out the value on the screen as well. So in other words, when I execute x is 5, I wanted to assign the value but also print out the result. The way to achieve that is to simply put your code within parentheses. Okay, so now I say x uh, 200, let's say. Right, so notice what I'm doing here. I am assigning the value 200 to the variable x, but I've also put the whole thing within parentheses. So what it'll do is it'll execute this and also print out the result. Right? So now you see that it also printed out the result 200, right? Sometimes it's convenient when you're testing out your program, you don't want to have to always say, I assign the value and then I print the value. There's no need. You can just put it within parentheses. It'll assign the value. It'll also print the result. This is just sometimes very convenient. Okay, so if needed, surround with parentheses and that really uh, is pretty useful many times.